This video is about do you have a bad attitude? There are four very clear signs that your attitude might suck, be negative, and not quite good for your betterment in your life. So to find out what those signs are, please stay tuned to this video. Welcome to the SCG Show, the home of education entertainment. And please do me a favor, if you really enjoyed this video, smash that like button, I would really appreciate it. It's very hard for us to determine our own attitude at times. We often grow up with very controlling parents say to us, you need to change or else. And then we go to school, college, and our teachers, lecturers say to us, you need to change or else. And then when we go out into the working world, our managers, superiors, bosses, whatever, will say to us, you need to change or else. But were they asking us to change for the better? Were they asking us to change their attitude to suit them? Or suit the narratives they have in their lives, businesses and minds? Who knows? What matters most is how you see yourself, not how others see you. You and you alone are the only person that can determine your attitude. I used to be a gambling addict for 14 years. It never met any of my needs, nor my attitude. My attitude is that of a prosperous, ambitious person. Yet why was I running to the casino every night to blow my money, my hard-earned money away? See how both don't fit the narrative? What has shaped our current attitudes at this moment, this very specific moment in our lives? Well, parents, guardians, grandparents play a huge role, uncles, aunties, family, depending on how enmeshed you are. Then we look at the role models we have, or the lack of role models that play a factor. Then the TV shows, movies, superheroes we watch along the way, not to mention athletes, and then friends, or the friends we don't associate with. There's many, many factors that have determined your attitude up until this very specific moment you're watching this video, aka this moment in your life. And there are many, many reasons and factors behind it as well. But what is most important above everything else is eliminating a bad attitude. You've discovered this video because maybe you think you do have a bad attitude. Not what others think. You think you have one. And a bad attitude will guarantee you a bad life. So here are the clear signs that you have a bad attitude attitude. Number one, constant comparisons. If you're always, metaphorically speaking, looking over at your neighbor's garden over the fence, rather than working and improving on your own, that's a bad attitude. Comparisons to others, no matter who they are, is a bad trait and a foolish one. You could be born to the same parents, live in the same house, and be the opposite of your family and siblings. Because everyone's unique and an individual. Now there's no harm in being inspired by other people. I'm going to give you an example of a good and bad attitude. Once upon a time, two brothers roughly the same age were invited to a birthday party hosted by a millionaire in their mansion. The older brother went to this party with his other brother and mingled and made friends. He was not fazed by the huge mansion, the lovely food, the rich people. He blended in, socialized, made friends and networked. He also became inspired by these successful rich people. That's how I want to live my life, he said. These people are no better, no smarter than me and look at what they've gone on to accomplish. The younger brother that went with him, unfortunately, hated the party. He didn't want to go to the mansion as he thought it was too pretentious. He never spoke to anyone and was constantly looking down on others. He was intimidated by the wealth of the hosts and kept himself to himself, and he could not wait to go home. The younger brother said, I'm not good enough for these people, despite the fact that these people let him in, by the way, and were happy to talk to him. They have everything, and I've got nothing. I'm a loser. I'm not worthy. I wish I never came here. Jesus, life has dealt me a bad hand. Which one of those brothers do you think had the bad attitude? It's the latter, clearly. Not only was he envious, but he was always comparing himself. He saw that he was not as wealthy or successful, and he waved the white flag and decided to give up on himself and in turn life. If you want to live a miserable life and keep on having a bad attitude, 
keep on comparing yourself to everyone else. Are you enjoying this video? If you are, please hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. If you are extremely entitled, selfish as a result, you've got a bad attitude. Here's some examples of entitlement. Believing the world owes you something always, and people also owe you something. Thinking that no matter what, you are always the priority. Assuming you're the only one and your feelings only matter. Lacking empathy and still putting your selfish needs first. Prioritizing superficial standards that are your own only. If you believe anything that I've just said from the above, I've got some awful news for you. The world actually owes you nothing. Life owes you nothing. Who you believe in, God, whatever, owes you nothing. People, society owes you nothing. You are not a priority. You are not the king or queen of the universe. Nobody cares. If you have done deeds and treated people well with the hope of getting something in return, that is a disgraceful attitude to have. You know what that's like? That's like donating to charity and hoping to get the fanfare, the attention, hoping people notice you more. You're not doing it because of a worthy cause. And I know a guy that did this. A man donated to charity, did favours for people, and so on and so forth, assuming, we all assumed he was just a very nice, generous person. He wasn't. He demanded things all the time. When I say demanded things, it would be at the drop of a hat, and you would have to drop everything to go and get him. And when you'd say, well, I can't do it, you know, respect my boundaries, he would say, but look at everything I did for you. You see... He thinks, and most other people think, that they're entitled to something for nothing. And they use that as evidence. They use that as an excuse. Well, I did this. I paid that. I gave this. I gave that. If you are entitled, extremely entitled, on the borders of narcissists, then you have a bad attitude. If you constantly find yourselves in heated debates, arguments, fights with almost anyone, you've got a bad attitude. Now, if you find yourself fighting with a toxic person like a narcissist, different story. But if you are confrontational with almost anyone and everyone, it's not good. But they support a different sports team to me. Who cares? But they're naive. They share different political views. They're too left-wing, liberal, or they're too right-wing. Who cares? But they think they're smarter, they're better. Who gives a shit? Did you know 90% of the arguments we have with people are petty and non-important. Why does this mean we've got a bad attitude if we're like this? The confrontational person might be an aggressive person with other issues going on. They might be very sexually frustrated, deeply insecure, extremely unhappy with their life, or being abused elsewhere. This usually comes from not being mature and strong enough to tackle their problems in life head on. When I was in a toxic relationship with a narcissist, this happened to me. I was fighting all the time with her, it was so negative, and the longer I stayed, the worse my life became. I'll never forget one day snapping at my family. Both my parents and I had the mother of all arguments. I was fighting with my brother even. It was a very dark, ugly place. I then broke down crying knowing that they were not my problem or my issues. My relationship was the problem. It had brought me to fighting with my beloved family. Confrontational people do not get many invites to parties. They don't have many friends. They don't get many opportunities. They're not very likable. They are not well respected. You don't really hear much about the person with a bad attitude. And above all else, they are awfully bad company in any shape or form. If you're very, very confrontational, you have a bad attitude. Finally, if you always put a negative spin on things, you've got a bad attitude. If you are constantly a glass half empty person, you've got a bad attitude. Like the confrontational person, nobody wants to be around a Debbie Downer. Trust me. Here's some examples of negative spins. Oh, that business still looks great, but it sounds too good to be true. 
Well, I got lucky dating them, but eventually they're going to leave me. I'm not good enough for them. I don't know how I got this opportunity. It's probably by mistake. I sold that property for good money, but the offer could have been better. I got hit, fit and healthy finally, and sober, but I'll never look like a supermodel. I finally managed to save a lot of money, but I still think about all of that money I blew over the years. I can't believe I got that job, but I'm probably going to get fired soon. I have such great friends. Won't be long until they ditch me from their group. God, saying that was just so draining. I can't imagine what it must be like hearing it. But hopefully you see my point, the one I'm trying to make. It is a little bit of entitlement, believing that you're never going to be satisfied. You cannot please the unpleasable. You cannot satisfy those who are never satisfied. People who usually and regularly put a negative spin on good, positive, beneficial news, they rarely amount to anything. And even if they do, they find a way to completely balls it up. And then they wonder to themselves and moan to the world, why was I dealt such a bad hand? Why am I so unlucky? Ask yourself after I've revealed all these signs. Do you have a bad attitude? Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment, like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, here's some more content you might be interested in.